what's up VC, it's Steve again, Harmless Rebel, and it's time for another quick video. Um, this time uh, I'm going to do one a little bit different. Uh, this is a CD collecting video. Um, it's not so much about uh, the type of music, but uh, the type of CD. Um, you know, a lot of people that, that are CD or, or vinyl uh, collectors simply collect um, the different artists that they like. Um, and, and I do that as well, but I also look for collectible things. Um, you know, with, with vinyl, you've got uh, some of the rarities out there that just were limited, uh, limited press back in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, you've got the colored vinyl, you've got the, the limited edition stuff where, you know, they do maybe a hundred. Um, uh, and and uh, CDs also have um, some collectible stuff out there to keep an eye, uh, keep an eye on. Uh, so I'm going to go over a couple different uh, uh, items of collectability within the CD world. Uh, like I said, it doesn't really have anything to do with the artists. This is more about the type of uh, CDs that these are. Um, so we're going to talk about Target CDs. Um, a couple of people have shown Target CDs. Let me make sure. Okay. A couple of uh, people have shown Target CDs um, over the last couple of years I've been in the VC, um, and, and, but they haven't really expanded much past that. So I want to touch on those real quick, and then we'll move on to something else. Um, so what are Target CDs? Uh, let me show you one right here. Um, this is a Target CD. You see it's got the little bullseye looking marks around it. And uh, here's another one. You can see, again, the, the little bullseye marks. And those are called Target CDs. And what these are is, uh, these are early CDs, generally printed from the late 70s. I think they started about 79 um, through about 84, 85. Um, I don't think there's any after that. Um, there may be, but uh, most of the ones that I see, usually the ones I run across were uh, pressed between 81 and 80, 83, 84. Um, and they're usually the first generation of CDs. Now that's not always the case. There are some earlier CDs from 8081 um, that are called uh, red face CDs where the whole uh, front cover is in red. Um, there's also uh, some black face CDs, same thing, the whole uh, cover is in black. And then the silver that you see shine through is the lettering and stuff. Um, those are very hard to find and those go for high dollars. Uh, a lot of the red face and black face CDs go anywhere from 50 to, to the multi hundred dollar range. Um, some other early ones are the Vertigo and the Vertigo had their own kind of label um, going on that was very cool and those are uh, also collectible. I don't have any of those to show, I wish I did. Um, but again, uh, right up there uh, with those are the Target CDs. Now the Target CDs are funny. Um, some of them you can pick up for five, ten dollars and then there's some that are three or four hundred dollars. It just kind of depends. Um, most of the ones made for the U.S. market and, and what the Target CDs are, um, generally they're West German or Japanese um, CDs that were made for the U.S. market. So they were made to be sold in the U.S. This is before there were any, any CD presses inside the United States. So they were pressed in West Germany and Japan. Um, Later on, towards the end of the, the, the Target CD uh, era, um, you also started seeing some from the U.S. Um, you also saw some from Europe, where they had just said Europe. Um, there were some that didn't say where they were pressed. And then you had a couple here and there that were pressed in France. Um, now this one, this is Jimi Hendrix, Kiss the Sky. Um, this one is from 84. And it's, let's see if I can get it so you can see it. Right at the bottom there, you can kind of make out it says, made in Japan. Um, so this is a Japan Target CD. And then the, the Zeppelin 4 is, uh, and this one's going to be probably even harder. Oh, maybe that one's easier. I don't know if you can see it right there, but it's made in West, and then on the other side of the Target is Germany. Um, now there's different variations of all these, too. Uh, in all honesty, I, I think the, the full list of Target CDs, there's less than 100 titles, or maybe right around 100 titles. Um, that were released on Target CDs. However, some of them were released from three or four, there, there's three, four, five variations of each one. So I've seen Target collections where um, guys have four or five hundred different uh, Target CDs. Um, and, and, and a great example is this one, um, the Kiss the Sky. Um, like I said, this was the, this is the Japanese 
This is the Japanese silver back. There's also a Japanese, I believe it's a red back where the background is red. Um, that's even rarer than this one. It's an earlier pressing. And if I remember correctly, that one goes for like five, six hundred bucks, whereas this one you can pick up for under fifty bucks, usually around in the twenty to thirty dollar range. Um, I was lucky enough to find this one at a at a used store. Uh, now another thing to look at uh, with the Target CDs is the case that they're in, because having the correct case adds to the value of them as well. Um, so for instance, this is one that I, I picked up recently at Goodwill, and the case has been replaced. And I know that because it's got the traditional CD case where it's got the little. Um, the little grooves along the edge, which we still see in, in, in new CD cases. Um, the original CD cases didn't have that. <coughs> Some people call them smooth sides. Um, I've seen them called cloudy sides. But if you can see right here, it's perfectly smooth and it's got that kind of uh, cloudy, clear, um, just kind of a, a cloudy plastic, but it's, it's absolutely smooth. Um, so usually, uh, you know, I'm always on the lookout for Target CDs. And uh, the first thing I do when I go to Goodwills or to used CD stores, especially where they stack them like this, is I look at the tops of all the CDs before I even flip through them to see if I see any of those smooth sides. If I see those smooth sides, it's usually one of two things. It's usually a Target CD or a non-Target CD, which I'll get to in just a second. Um, and all, if the case is in good condition, no matter what it is, if it's a Target or a non-Target, I'm going to buy it. Regardless of, the, you know, for instance, um, about a week ago, I was at Goodwill and I picked up uh, Al Jarreau. This is uh, High Crime. I'm not a huge Al Jarreau fan, uh, but I do collect the, the Target CDs. Um, so I grabbed it. And I did give it a spin. There's some good stuff on here. I'm just not into this... this R&B slash jazz fusion that they did in the 80s, 70s and 80s, just wasn't my thing. I like jazz, I like some R&B, I just don't like that mix that they did, where they mix it with synth, and um, so not a bad CD, uh, but definitely something that I'll be keeping for the collection. You can see that that's in the original smooth case. But uh, anytime I see a smooth case, no matter what it is, and I've seen smooth cases that, that people have put newer CDs into. I'll always buy it if it's in good condition just because those smooth cases are worth money too. And, and the main reason I keep them is, for instance, I've got this Led Zeppelin IV here, which is in a modern case. So, you know, I want to make sure I get this into the right case. So, regardless, uh, these are a couple of the, the smooth cases. And, and, like, this one is, you know, this is a West German pressing. But on the back of the CD, it says printed in USA. There's also a variation that says printed in West Germany. And you'll see the same thing with the Japanese. Some of them will, um, for instance, uh, this is the, the printed in Japan variation. It's hard to see there. There's also a printed in USA version um, or, or variation of this one. So multiple variations of these Target CDs. They're all collectible. Um, these are two, two of the more sought after ones for obvious reasons. Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin. Um, now we're going to get to the non-Target CDs. Um, non-Target CDs are CDs from the same era. Um, they just didn't have the targets on them. Uh, for whatever reason, maybe they were a, a second pressing, uh, whatever the case may be. So, for instance, this is one that I recently found. Um, this is Madonna. And this one has uh, Made in Japan. But there's no target on it. Um, and the, there's a target version of this CD same background it just has uh, the target on it and this one on the back also uh, printed in Japan again this was made for the US market the ones that are the most valuable that I found um, are the Japanese target CDs made for the Japanese market um, they're a lot rarer uh, they made millions uh, and I may be exaggerating maybe hundreds of thousands of the Target CDs for the U.S. market in Japan. They made very few of them for the Japanese market. Uh, while Western music was popular in Japan at that time, it's not as popular, it wasn't as popular then as it is now. Um, they were still listening to mostly Japanese music, but with, with a little bit of American music here and there. So there were a lot less press there. And those are the ones you see generally for five, $600. Um, and you see the same thing. There's European stuff for the European market. 
And you can also, that's another thing I should point out, uh, a lot of it, the labels. Um, so this one is a Warner Brothers. You can see the Warner Brothers logo here. Even though this one was printed in uh, West Germany, um, this was printed in West Germany for the U.S. market by Warner Brothers. Um, the Al Jarreau High Crime printed for the European market was printed on WE, it was printed by WEA, not Warner Brothers. So <clears throat> just to add a, a little confusion to it. Um, so again, a, a, a quick way to tell the non-Target CDs from that same era is that they also have that smooth side. Um, and again, this was made for the U.S. market even though it's marked Japan. And then you have another one. Um, this is a, also a non-Target. This is Van Halen 1984. Warner Brothers. And this one's uh, made in Germany as well. It's kind of hard to see with the glare, but you got the made in Germany right here. Uh, this was made at the transition time. This is kind of when they were transitioning from, uh, I believe this one was pressed in 85. So this is when you're starting to see uh, more stuff being pressed in the U.S. Um, and this one's got the regular uh, modern CD case. This one never came in the smooth side. But it's still one of the early uh, press for the U.S. market in Germany, in West Germany. So uh, next up, we're going to get to some uh, the Japanese pressings, um, just straight up Japanese stuff. Um, Japanese is always collectible. Um, the quality that the Japanese put out has always been above everybody else when it comes to music. You see it. Um, the Japanese uh, um, vinyl is always 90% uh, of the time. It's it's the best sounding. Um, I found very little um, Japanese, actually I can't think of any Japanese pressing that I've ever bought on vinyl that didn't sound good, um, where it was an issue with the vinyl or an issue with the pressing or mastering. Um, a lot of it, it that I've found is, is more recording issues. Um, so let's jump into a couple of the, there's, there's various styles of Japanese um, CDs that you'll see. This is just your traditional CD. Um, 90% of Japanese uh, CDs come with an OB, just like vinyl does, which is a little wrap that goes around here. Um, OB, I think it, it translates to belt, basically, or banner, some people say. Um, but it wraps around the CD right here. And actually, I have this one. Something I've made a habit of is I'll, I'll put them inside the back here on the clear plastic ones, or I'll slide them right here. Um, but, you know, for, for collectability, you want to make sure you save that OB because if it's not there, it takes away from the value of the CD. Uh, this is Catch the Rainbow. This is a tribute to Rainbow. This is a really killer album. This is actually released in the U.S. Um, and this has uh, uh, Henny Bossi from Italium, uh, uh, Richter from Gamma Ray, uh, Wessel from Gamma Ray, uh, Jens Becker from Grave Digger and Kingdom Come. Uh, Darius from Halloween, let's see, uh, Yorn, Roland, all the guys from Halloween, basically. everybody from Halloween is on here, uh, Hal uh, from Primal Fear, uh, I mean, it, it's just filled with, with stars, uh, British, uh, uh, power metal guys, uh, and they did a really good job on this. Now one thing you'll notice, uh, most Japanese albums have an extra track, it's not always the case, but most of the time. And I've heard different reasons for that. I, I've heard them say people say that the Japanese have extra tracks because they don't release singles in Japan. Um, that's incorrect, though. Uh, every time, every music store I went to in Japan when I lived there always had a section for singles, and they always had some really killer singles. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe once upon a time that was the case, but uh, uh, the Japanese actually have some really cool singles that they release themselves. But most Japanese albums do have an extra track. Um, now that's not true when you get to like the mini LPs and all stuff like that, and I'll get to that in a minute. But your 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 regular CDs usually have an extra, um, and that's the case with this one. This one has uh, "Lady of the Lake" as the Japan or the Japan only bonus. Now you'll notice this one is all in English all the way around. You will see some Japanese manufacturing uh, text about the manufacturing and stuff here on the bottom, but for the most part, everything is in English. And as a uh, with with most Japanese, and I'm not gonna. Oh, I guess I'll pull it out. It does have the, the Japanese lyric book in there as well. 
with the the book in English, but both spines are in English on this one. This is more what you see with modern CDs. No, and I say modern, the last 10, 12 years or so. Um, when I lived in Japan in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, most of the CDs were like this. So here's uh, uh, U2 October. Um, you got the Japanese writing at the bottom here. This one doesn't have an extra song, um, but if you look, you have the Japanese text on the one spine, and then it's in English, the, you know, just the normal text on the other. And this is the way most Japanese CDs were through the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, this one I got here for a dollar, a dollar ninety nine at a, a thrift store. Um, it didn't come with the Obi, um, but I also wasn't going to pass up on it. You know, it was in it's perfect condition other than the case. Um, but it's kind of the more traditional uh, look of Japanese CDs. Uh, and then what we're listening to right now is also this is uh, Guardians of Time, and it's their album Machines of Mental Design. This is a, a power metal band, and this too is a Japanese pressing. And uh, this one has an additional track. Uh, it's got the uh, let's see. It says "Torn Apart" original version, but that's not a song on here. So maybe that's a song off of one of their earlier albums. Uh, I'm not sure. But again, it's got the Japanese booklet on the inside. Um, next up are, are the, the Japanese. Um, I collect all Japanese stuff, but uh, my favorite are the mini LPs. Now, you're starting to see mini LPs all over the place. Uh, all the new Mobile Fidelity um, CDs are mini LPs. Uh, from what I've seen, I could be incorrect on that, but all the, all the newer ones that I've seen are, are, are uh, mini LPs, which I don't like. I, I actually like Mobile Fidelity's old cases with a little pop-up thing on them. That was kind of their thing, and I kind of wish they would have stuck with it, but I, you know, the mini LPs is still cool. And I know that the newest Beatles uh, box sets here in the U.S. have come in the mini LP format. Um, and I, I just don't think they do it here as good or in Europe as they do in Japan. Japan, they do a really good job on these. Um, so we'll start off with uh, ACDC Power Age or Power Edge, however you want to say it. Um, actually, you know what? Let's start with the Van Halen. I'll get to that one in a minute. Um, this one is a true mini LP, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. So you've got your, your OB right here, which wraps around. And they usually have the Made in Japan mark on there somewhere. But you open it up, and the sleeve is exactly the same as the LP. And, you know, these, these I'm not going to take it off, but this does slide off of there. And then you pull everything out, and the inner sleeve is the same inner sleeve as Van Halen 1. And then they use the same type of inner sleeve here that they use in the Japanese albums, which I love these things. And then to top it off, if you look at this, the center, the CD label is the same as the center label on the Van Halen CD, or uh, album. Um, so I mean, they just go above and beyond on these mini LPs. Exactly accurate, they, they sound amazing. The Japanese remastered stuff is so good. Um, the Japanese don't have the issue with the loudness that you hear. The loudness wars didn't extend to Japan. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you've got the booklet with the lyrics in English and in Japanese. Um, so here's one style. Again, that's the Van Halen. And as I was saying, this one's slightly different. So you've got the Obi here. And they have different series as well. Um, actually, let's take a look at these. If you look, I've got 1984 here, and I've got Van Halen. If you look, the Obis are different. That's because they're from different series. Um, there's a full series of Van Halen albums that have the Van Halen logo and look like this. And this one is from an earlier series where the, the Obi looks like this. Um, so, with the Van Halen, there's an entire series of Van Halen albums that have this, this, this design uh, on it. So, ugh. 
just to add to the confusion, you know. Um, so this one again, it's like the album. Then you slide everything out. Just like the inner sleeve. Now this one's a little bit different because this one has the album cover uh, on the CD. It doesn't have the center label. And there is another uh, ACDC series that has the same center labels from the albums. And this one came with a little advertisement for the box set and then all the rest of them. And then this one's a little bit different in that it came with the English, the entire English booklet. And then it also came with the entire Japanese booklet, which has all the stuff from the English booklet translated as well as the song lyrics. So just another cool example. And then I'll show you one more of the mini LPs, and this one's slightly different than the other two that I've shown so far. Now I have new sleeves on order too. They actually make replacement sleeves. You can see these are all beat up. And that's the way I got them. I, I bought all of these here in the US. Unfortunately, um, I was collecting already when these first came out in Japan, uh, but they were just starting to pop up everywhere right before I left and I didn't buy them. Um, I wish I would have. So these are all ones, and I've got you know five or six others that I'll show. Maybe I'll do another time. Another time I'll do a, a mini LP uh, video. This one's slightly different though. So you got Bon Jovi here, uh, and here's the little uh, the little hype sticker, and uh, here gone and Katagana. Um, and this one has an Obi, but it's a little different. Instead of being the wraparound Obi, it's got this little stick on Obi on the back of the plastic. I don't like these as much. These are uh, traditionally your, your lower quality um, CDs. I'm trying to see if this one has a price. About the same price, 2200 yen, which is... And then this one has this little... Oh, that's cool. Oh, apparently this was part of a box set. No, it can't be because it's at 2200 yen. It says this album should come with a shirt and hat because it has a heart and soul oh it should okay it's a stupid little note it doesn't make much sense but whatever and then uh, you've got your slippery when wet now this may have come with the same inner sleeve um, it didn't have it when I got it and there's no booklet I got this one for relatively cheap so I wasn't disappointed that it was missing this stuff usually if I run across many LPs and anything's missing I don't buy them um, this one I only paid like five bucks for, so I wasn't going to let that get in the way of, of picking up, pick, or picking it up. So, um, but just a tiny variation in how, uh, or this particular series. Go ahead and put that up there with the, where they go. Um, and then last, um, the last type of collectible CD that I, I look for is just promotion, pr uh, promo items, you know, and you're familiar with promo items. Um, with uh, uh, records, white label promos, gold stamp promos. You've got the same thing with uh, uh, CDs. Some of them are valuable, some of them aren't, you know. Uh, here's kind of a, a little different uh, kind of promo that you don't see as much. Um, this is an advanced release. Um, so this is the Crusader, or Crusaders from uh, uh, Trivium. Uh, Trivium has gone through various styles over the, the course of their career. This particular album is more thrash. Really good album. The album is exactly the same beginning to end as the, the normal release. However, it says advanced release, uh, advanced CD. And it's got a slightly different CD uh, cover. Uh, the CD looks different than the original release. And then again, advanced CD. Um, and this would have been sent to the, the you know, generally to the music store um, to play leading up to the, the, the actual CD coming in. Um, another type of promo is you got the straight promo. This is a, a promo single um, for Love in an Elevator. Uh, this one's a DJ promo. So this one has one, two, three, four different versions of this song. Um, these were usually sent to, uh, to club DJs. As a matter of fact, when I was DJing in the late 90s, um, I was part of a, a promo club where uh, 
you signed up for the style of music. Mine was, I was mostly playing alternative at that time, so mine was alternative and hard rock and uh, metal. And uh, each month I would get 10 or 12 promo CDs, stuff like this. And that was the only way to get stuff like this back then. Um, this one is really rare. Um, the normal Love in an Elevator single, if I remember correctly, was a three inch. Um, this is a normal size CD. And this one goes for 20 to $30. Um, you know. And again, you've got the promo only right there. So cool Aerosmith promo. Uh, and then you've also got the, uh, the label samplers. Uh, this one was, uh, uh, who was this? Uh, Epic Records, and they just wanted to. Uh, this is kind of a demo of some of their, you know, get, trying to get some of their bands out there. It's called a Wake Up Call for the '90s. This one came out in 1990, uh, and this is just some really cool uh, hard rock and heavy metal uh, off of Epic Records. Uh, this is a promo copy, like I said. It, you can see the demonstration not for sale here. Um, they also did release this as a regular release. Uh, and this one goes for about 10, 15 bucks. But uh, you've got Ozzy Osbourne, Alice Cooper, Killer Dwarves, um, Shark Island Prong, Suicidal Sanctuary, Fifth Angel, um, Gothic Slant, Malia Rage, um, Creator, Johnny Cash, uh, and then Riot, which I don't know how Johnny Cash got in. Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny Crash. Okay. Um, but just another cool promo. Um, and then again, uh, that one's busted. Uh, let's see. You've got the demo not for sale there. Um, so that's my CD. I just wanted to do it, um, uh, show you some stuff to keep an eye on. Especially now, CDs are going for cheap. Um, especially these Target CDs. Um, the most I've paid for any of those Target CDs that I've shown or the non-Target is $2. Um, I got a couple of them at a, a Second and Charles. I got a couple of my Targets from, most of them from Goodwill stores. Um, I find a lot of those Target and non-Targets at Goodwill where you pay $1.50, $2 for them. And like I said, some of them are worth hundreds of dollars. So uh, keep an eye out. Um, the promo CDs. Uh, a word of caution, actually, uh, with the, uh, where's the, the mini LPs. The mini LPs are very collectible. Um, this one, I think, goes for about $35. So, and most of these go for between $15 and $35. They're, they're usually in that range. Uh, I, I, found a, I found most of these for anywhere from five to 15 here in the US, which is a good price. But like I said, normal price was $22, 2200 yen in Japan, which is about 18, 20 bucks at the time. Um, but like I said, most of them go high 20s, high 30s if you look on eBay, if you look on the various sites. Um, so they're being counterfeited. Uh, almost all of them are Russian counterfeits. Um, Usually the OB is an exact copy. The cover is the exact copy. Where things get different is the CD. Usually the CDs are off, the color is off on the CD or they do a completely different um, CD uh, 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 print on the cover. So for instance, this one has the cover on it, whereas the Russian version has a blue background. It just says Powerage across, or Powerage across the CD. Um, so when you're thinking about buying these, if you're paying 10, 15 bucks for them, which is a, a really good price for these. Um, just make sure you pull up uh, Discogs or uh, try to pull up the information on your phone uh, and make sure that you're getting a, an official copy and that you're not getting one of the Russian bootlegs. So um, that's it, VC. I hope you like it, this video. Tell me what you guys thought. Other than that, uh, take care and have a good one.